Now let's begin with the first core concept of today, which is position of a point with respect to a parabola. To understand this, I want you to consider the standard rightward opening parabola having its vertex at origin. Its equation, you know, is given by y squared equals 4ax. My question to you is, tell me, this parabola divides my entire Cartesian plane into how many disjoint regions? Think. The correct answer is 3. And what are those regions? Well, the regions sitting inside the parabola, on the parabola, and outside the parabola. Well, at this point of time, you should have a curious question. What is that? Well, we all have studied circles, right? We know circle is a closed figure. So it's very evident for us to understand what do we mean by when we say the region sitting inside the circle and outside the circle. But as a matter of fact, a parabola is an open and unbounded figure. Like this one only, if you see, it's extending infinitely towards its right, isn't it? So what do I mean when I say inside the parabola and outside the parabola? Right. Well, the region of the parabola which consists of the focus, okay, that region which contains the focus, that constitutes to be inside the parabola. Any point which is sitting in this region will be called an interior point of the parabola. Next, this outline, this boundary of the parabola that you can see constitutes to be the region on the parabola. Okay? Pretty straightforward. And the remaining left out region, which is the region devoid, absent of focus, that constitutes to be outside the parabola. Any point sitting in this region is called an exterior point of the parabola. Understood? Mind it, this explanation is not just confined to this particular parabola. In fact, it is valid for every parabola. Be it standard, be it non-standard. Got it? Now, tell me, if I give you the equation of the parabola and I give you the coordinates of a point, what is the criteria for me to say that this point lies inside the parabola, outside this parabola or on the parabola? Basically, I want to know what are the conditions which will help me conclude the location of this point with respect to this parabola? Right? Let's understand what they are. For that, let's say I'm considering the same parabola and the point of interest is P having coordinates x1, y1. I want to know what are the conditions for this point to lie inside the parabola, on the parabola and outside the parabola. Okay, got the question very nicely. So, first case, when the point is sitting inside the parabola, what happens in that case? What is the picture with which gets created? Let's understand. What I want you to do is somehow generate a point using P on the parabola. Right now, P is not sitting on the parabola. I want you to generate a point through P sitting on the parabola. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a perpendicular onto the x-axis which meets the parabola at let's say point Q. Now, you know, all the points on this perpendicular are going to have the same x coordinate x1. So, q will also look like x1, comma something. Let's say it looks like x1, comma y2. Okay? Now, realize one thing. Because q is sitting on this parabola, it will satisfy its equation. So, what will I get? y2 square equals 4ax1. This is true. Next. Because P is sitting inside the parabola, this length, which is y1, is definitely less than this length, which is y2. Do you agree? Yes, pretty straightforward. So, what do I have? y1 is less than y2. And I can in the next step say y1 square will also be hence less than y2 square. But y2 square I know is 4ax1. So, what do I get? y1 square is less than 4ax1 or y1 square minus 4ax1 is less than 0. Yes, that's it. 
for P to be an interior point of the parabola y square equals 4ax, this is the condition which should be met. That's it. Moving to case 2. This time, my, para my point is sitting on the parabola. So, the argument is pretty straightforward. Because the point sits on the parabola, it will satisfy its equation. So, what will I get? y1 square equals 4ax1. That means y1 square minus 4ax1 equal to 0. Okay? So, for p to sit on the parabola, the only condition which should be met is this. Moving to case 3, which is that the point P lies outside this parabola. In this case, again, P is not sitting on the parabola. So, with the help of P, we will generate a point which is going to lie on the parabola. So, same strategy, same process. Drop a perpendicular from P onto the x-axis such that it meets the parabola at some point, let's say Q. Obviously, the x-coordinate of q will be x1. So, q will look like x1, comma something. Let's say x1, comma y2. Okay. Now, because q is again sitting on the parabola, it will satisfy its equation. So, what will I get? I will get y2 square equals 4ax1. And now, compare the lengths of the perpendicular from p onto the x-axis and q onto the x-axis. So, this length is y2. And this length is y1. This time y1 is greater than y2, right? y1 is greater than y2, which means y1 square is greater than y2 square. But y2 square is equal to 4ax1. So what do I get? y1 square is greater than 4ax1. Or y1 square minus 4ax1 is greater than 0. And bingo. For P to be an exterior point of this parabola, y squared equals 4ax, this is the condition which should be met. Do you understand? Yes. So, we have that single most con condition which should be satisfied for concluding that a point lies inside the parabola, on the parabola and outside the parabola. To remember this, I have a beautiful short trick for you. See, the parabola right now into consideration is y squared equals 4ax. What I want you to do is take all the terms to any one side. But the condition is that the coefficient of the highest degree variable should be positive. That means y squared should have its coefficient positive. For that, I'm obviously going to bring all the terms to the left hand side and create right hand side equal to 0. So, what will that give me? y square minus 4ax equal to 0. When you do this, this expression which gets created on the left hand side, call it s. Okay, so now your s is y square minus 4ax. Okay, till here you understood? What you do is plug in x equals x1 and y equals y1 in this expression. What will that give you? That will give you the value of s at the point x1, y1. It will come out to be y1 square minus 4ax1, which is going to be a real number. If this real number is less than 0, I will say that p is an interior point of this parabola. If this real number is equal to 0, zero I will say p lies on the parabola. And if this particular real number is greater than 0, I will say this point lies outside the parabola. That's it. And again, this particular strategy that I've shared with you to remember this concept is not just confined to y squared equals 4ax only. It's confined for any equation of the parabola. Take all the terms to one side create the other side equal to 0. The condition is the coefficient of the highest degree variable should be positive. Declare that expression on the left hand side to be s and find out the value of s at that concerned point whose location you want to fetch. Okay. If that particular real number comes out to be less than 0, we say the point is an interior point of the parabola. If it is equal to 0, we say the point is sitting on the parabola. And if that real number comes out to be greater than 0, we say the point is an exterior point of that particular respective parabola. Okay, now before moving forward, just a word of caution. 
See, in here, many of y'all would be thinking, why did I take the point to be in the first quadrant only? Isn't it? So, try to understand, the parabola that we considered here was a rightward opening parabola. Hence, its graph only lies in the first and the fourth quadrant. There is no portion of this graph lying in the second or the third quadrant. That's why, if there's any point whose coordinates are such that it lies in the second or the third quadrant, we can straight away say that it will be an exterior point for this parabola. Confusion arises when the point is sitting either in the first or the fourth quadrant. In that case, how do you decide where the point is actually sitting with respect to the parabola? That is the important question which we just discussed.